What's up, what's up? It's the Green Ogie coming back to you again for a part two of discussing Pookie and how it relates to dating and culture within the black community. Okay, this next video topic I want to talk about and its title is The Two Standards of Success. So I want to start off this section with a with an analogy of sorts we are familiar with the soft drinks of sprite pepsi and coke right at least most of us have seen or heard of these drinks let alone taste one of these uh, popular beverages now just opposed with shasta cola rc cola Shasta Tiki Punch and you know just generally speaking just these somewhat famous but really kind of off brand uh, soft drinks now when I first mentioned Sprite most of you all automatically knew what you were getting uh, that that sweet taste started sizzling in your mouth and that, that sweet, you know, aroma from back in the day, that nostalgia hits you, right? Now, if I mention the Shasta, some of you all aren't familiar with Shasta. Maybe some of you all are only familiar with the name brand, right? You know, because, you know, you're only used to buying, you know, the reputable beverages and kind of just sticking to your guns. And that's okay. Now, this is my point. We as black men, we are seen as the Shasta Cola, RC Cola, the Tiki Punch, right? Instead of the Sprites and the Coca-Colas of the world. You know, and also by our women here in America, right? Now, this could be due to a myriad of reasons and speculations such as, well, okay, maybe you don't have any initiative, maybe you're lazy, and then you can you can come counter that, well, maybe we don't have the lack, maybe we have a lack of resources, and then we have division within our communities, we just can't get anything together for ourselves, and you know, and then uh, the, there's always the whole ace in the hole of white supremacy which of course cannot be discounted but just like nothing in science is a hundred percent i won't dedicate a hundred percent of the blame to that because i don't like to be a victim you know now here is the issue in which i think some black women think lesser of black men by default now just generally speaking we are just starting to see us as black men in the same corporate structure as our white counterparts right even myself I was only able to get gainful employment after COVID-19 you know there had to be a downturn in the market in order for me to even get seen by an employer and I had a degree it was so frustrating. It was like, I almost felt like I was just a criminal with a degree, you know. So what does this have to do with anything? Well, let's just say that me as a black man was only recently able to get a job in corporate America, right? Now, on the flip side, there are, there's a looming suspicion that even the most downtrodden white person you know, maybe a person who has a white person who has no educational background, maybe basically <laughs> is basically, you know, living next in the dumps, basically be considered living in the ghetto, um, would could obtain gainful employment a lot sooner than even a black man <laughs> with a master's degree. Right. So this, of course, only assumes the white privilege, right? And not hard work. If we assume hard work, 
then there is no argument for me, you know, in this video. However, if we assume the white privilege, then no matter how hard a black man may work to become successful, he is only that RC Cola at best and not Coke, figuratively speaking, of course. When you put things in perspective, the, ba the black man really only has some semblance of power in sports or music. But outside of these two venues, we virtually are dismissible from life altogether. At least from the dominant white society's power structure, right? We always play second fiddle or second class citizens to whatever new development that may come along. For example, you can look at the migrant crisis and see how even migrants in Chicago are being treated better than those black residents. So if there was a whole wave of black migrants to another country, then the citizens of that receiving country would stop the black migrants altogether. They won't even be able to get on the plane, right? Or even if they did get here, their life would be so disenfranchised compared to the local inhabitants or local citizens of that country that they, they'd be living in squalor before they start to get a handout from the government, right? So here's the thing, you know, we as black men, especially, you know, nowadays, we were supposed to be stopping and leading the charge to get more rights for us. That way we don't get undermined in the community. So, but here's the thing. If we can't even manage interpersonal relationships in our communities, then how can we manage the issues that affect us as a people? Which, once again, is putting us as second-class citizens compared to the migrants, right? Now, what does this have to do with the perception of black men being seen less in the eyes of black women and ultimately being pookie? Okay, well, let me go ahead and break it down. If I told you that the quality of your life could be potentially compromised due to the color of your skin, you would start asking yourself why and try to find a way out, right? In our case, not only are we financially inviolable to our women, but during even the... during the milestones of our lives our our way of living is stricken with uncertainty and can I say um, uncertainty and 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 chaos at best you know so he, here's the thing If the black woman judges the black man by white standards, then that black man will never be good enough, right? The majority reasons why is because black men are not the Sprites and the Coca-Colas of the world, right? Those are white people. Those are Asian people, right? We are the Shasta Colas. We don't have the marketing of the white dominant society to warrant us being accepted or even being considered in the first place. However, even though there is an increasing standard of black women using the white standard of success to judge bl uh, black men by, there are still a lot of black women using the black standard. 
which in my opinion is still bad because it it somewhat plays into the victim olympics such as well you know what about 400 years of slavery and and the constant undermining about you know white men and you know putting us down narrative and here's the thing all of these are legitimate arguments these are real arguments you know black men were lynched we were taken out we we are constantly undermined you know the you know the, the Tulsa bombing and the black wall street all that was real right but here's the whole thing how is that gonna feed my family right now you see what i'm saying that does not feed my woman right now and that does not feed my child right now so it's like you the candle is being burnt on every side imaginable if you're a black man right so you have to you have to fight the dominant society and then you also have to come and take care of your woman but the best you can do for your woman is infrequent right or the best you can do for your woman is maybe so it's like what respect can you garner if that's the best you can do right see this is why you know there's so much upheaval in our community you know if in short it's it's going to be hard for black women to see us as as men due to the remnants of slavery and due to the fact that oh hey um you know there's there's a white man doing just two times better than you he don't and maybe maybe he doesn't have to work three times as hard you see what i'm saying if you white your life is going to be three times easier maybe but if you black you're going to have to work three times as hard so now it's like if you're a black woman dang my life got to be three times as hard because i'm with him or then you, then you got to think about it that's automatically putting the onus on us to just always be superman which once again is causing us to be a pookie and a ray ray you see what i'm saying if you always got to do three uh be three times good three times best your sexual drive is always going to be up and thriving because it's like there's no downtime because even if your downtime is not three and maybe even two that you still working twice as hard as any other white person or any other individual here in america right so your sex drive is always going to be up you see what i'm saying this is why i said every black man who does not have his or her own business or land or doesn't have to answer to somebody we are all pookies and ray rays whether that's immediate or a ticking time bomb from wherever we're working or our situation thank you